Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our morning service. We continue with our sermon series towards the Summer of Holiness, and today we're going to look at um, anxiety. Now, I know that anxiety itself is, is such a, a vast um, area. I mean, wh what do we talk about when we talk about anxiety? Different kinds of anxieties, different reasons for being anxious, and so on. So we're going to narrow it down a bit to the anxiety we may feel when our loved ones relocate, move overseas or move away from us. Um, that may create in us uh, anxiety, um, a worry, and so I thought we'll, we'll explore that a little bit. Uh, we're going to look at Psalm 107, and what does God say about that? But more about that later on, I'm going to hand us over to our music team to lead us to a time of praise and worship. Good morning, everybody. Please stand with us as we go uh, through a time of praise and worship. <laughs> Is the God who's over. This is my 
the grace of God we will carry on. He's loving just forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. Forever God is faithful. Forever God is faithful. fears and anxieties to him. Just picture yourself at his feet, passing all this on to him and having faith that he will take care of this for you. I fear not for the Lord is with me. He upholds his righteous hand from his word springs life, it's drawing on the broken, he redeems the fallen man. Your grace is all I need, you are strong.
Again, good morning and a warm welcome to all of you. If you're here for the first time or visiting, a very special welcome to you. After the service, please make sure that uh, we get introduced to one another. I'll meet you there at the door. Uh, I've received the following flower messages for this week. So here they are. Wishing you a happy birthday, Natalie and a wonderful year ahead. Lots of love, Dad, Mom, and the rest of the Borchitz family. So Natalie, to you from the church as well, from all of us here, a happy birthday to you. And then the next one, I just thank the Lord for all the blessings I have received as I celebrate my children's birthdays. Wesley on the 26th, and Donovan and Dominique on the 30th. Lots of love, from Meryl Kennelly. So our celebrations with Meryl Kennelly and the family on the birthdays of the children. So those are the two flower messages. If you have a birthday this coming week or you're celebrating anything, then please let us know. We want to celebrate with you. Can I just ask that those who are watching online, if you can give us a, a thumbs up, we would like to know where you are watching from. Please uh, write to us right now and uh, add it on to our live stream so that we can say hello to you from the church and acknowledge your presence here in the service. And to all of you who are here present, thank you very much for being here today. Friends, as you've said um, uh, earlier on, uh, we are currently in our sermon series. We are drawing the sermon series to an end next Sunday. So today we will be looking at um, anxious or anxiety, but we are narrowing that down, as you will see later on. Before I go to our Bible reading, which will be from Psalm 107, verses 1 to 8. Those who are watching live stream, you may want to get your Bibles. Uh, 
we, Psalm 107, verses 1 to 8. And so today, later on in the service, we will be praying for the following people, uh, Gordon Robinson, Seth Hall, Leanne Tinney, as well as Violet Boerta. These people are all ill, and we will be praying for them later on, for them and their families. Okay, friends, then it's over to, to our Bible reading, Psalm 107, verses 1 to 8. Psalm 107, verses 1 to 8. Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord tell their story. Those He redeemed from the hand of the foe, those He gathered from the lands from east and west, from north and south. Some wandered in desert wastelands, finding no way to a city where they could settle. They were hungry and thirsty, and their lives ebbed away. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and He delivered them from their distress. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Let them give thanks to the Lord for His unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for humanity or humankind. So, so far in God's word, and we thank God for God's word. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Friends, I think that Psalm, first and foremost, invites us to, to be a people who give thanks to God. A people who gives thanks, who give thanks to God uh, for God's faithfulness. It is as we give thanks that we acknowledge that God is indeed faithful. So this psalm calls us to a place of giving thanks, of gratitude, of thankfulness for what God had done and continued to do for us. Not just in the words that we say, but also living our lives in a way in which we give thanks to God for God's faithfulness. So when you want to speak about God's people and what God's people are about, this is what God's people are about. They are a people who give thanks to God for God's faithfulness. And that psalm says to us we give thanks for God's faithfulness because God saves us. We we give thanks for our salvation. And one of the treasures I think we have in the Old Testament is that salvation is not limited to heaven one day. That salvation is also seen here and now. God takes us from one place and puts us in a different place which is better. Where we can know um, a healing where we can know wholeness, where we can be whole again. So salvation is also for here and now. And so God's people is a people who give thanks for God's salvation here and now. And God is faithful for God will save God's people. When you continue to read that psalm, every fifth, fourth, fifth verse, it speaks about God's people giving thanks to God for God's faithfulness. 
And then in the beginning of that psalm, the psalmist calls out to those who are travelers, those who are resettling, those who have moved from one place to another. And it's almost as if the psalm says, if that is who you are, then you need to give God thanks, especially you. Especially you. Because God has saved you. You need to give thanks. For God has saved you. Um, and so, today our, our, our topic, our theme is anxiety. But as I've said earlier on, we can stand here and talk about anxiety for days to come. Um, and so, I'm trying to narrow it down. So many people today have to deal with um, anxiety that comes from loved ones moving far away. Our children are going overseas, not just for a holiday or a visit, but to, to live there, to not come back. You know, some years ago, um, it would be the hero in a story who would have the courage and the means to go far away from home and settle in a distant country. Today, not heroes anymore, but the reality of so many people. The world has become so small, so that it is more and more the reality of people. People move all over the world, whatever the reasons may be for them moving. But, but they go all over. Uh, the fact that you are born in South Africa does not mean that you're going to live your whole life here. You may end up living in England, in New Zealand, in America, it doesn't matter where. So there's a great movement of people all over the world. Not just, it's not just the South African thing. Um, but it's possible for people. It is much easier today for people to relocate to a distant land, to go away from home. We are not so homebound as we used to be uh, many, many years ago. And it's almost as, as, we, as if in the psalm we hear... We hear the psalmist says, if that is the case, if that is your reality, then you, of all people, need to give thanks to God for God's faithfulness. For God saves God's people. And one of the ways in which God does so is God guides God's people. And that guidance may include a resettling, a move away from home to a new place. When God guides God's people, God's people give thanks to God for God's guidance. That is how God is faithful. People who move, who move overseas or who are going away to, to not come back, to resettle, to go to a distant land, God's people do that, not because they randomly kind of decide we're going to go, but precisely because they are being guided by God. And I think that's the secret that this psalm wants to reveal or say to us when we think about our anxieties around loved ones moving far away. 
that they go because they are guided by God. Just as you are guided by God, you who are you who stay behind. They too are guided by God. Because the psalmist calls especially them to give thanks to God for God's salvation, for God's faithfulness in taking them to a place where they can find life and where they are guided by God. God's people give thanks to God for God's faithfulness. The struggle, I think, lies deep within us. I think anxiety is a, a worry that we have because we cannot control the outcome of what is happening. That creates anxiety. Um, when we can't control the outcome of what is happening, we feel anxious. We feel worry, worried. Um, now, I think I'm the last person to preach about anxiety in this sense. Um, I am, you know, I can my anxiety levels can rise just like that for nothing. <laughs> um, but I think that's a cause for anxiety. <clears throat> and especially when we need to let go of those God has guided or have guided to move to other places. We struggle to let go. Throughout our lives, we struggle with control. Throughout our lives, when do we hold on to? When do we let go? I think it's a common human experience. <laughs> it's a common human struggle. As parents, as friends, you name it, we struggle with, with control, with letting go and holding on. When and where? When will it be good? When will it not be good? But I think this psalm this, the, the, author, the psalmist in this, writing this psalm expresses something deeply human, something deeply within us, that it's okay to let go, and we can do so. It's okay for us as God's people, because those who are moving are doing so because they are guided by God to do so. In other words, we let go and let God. It is as simple as that. Now, I don't think that will take away our anxiety completely. I mean, you know, it's not as though one moment you're so anxious and the next moment you're like very calm and, you know, it's all fine. I don't think we, we are like that at all. But I think we can learn. As we learn to let go, I think slowly but surely we deal with our, with our anxiety levels. <laughs> um, and we can do so because we know that they are going because God is guiding them too. Now, not, not everybody moving away will, will express that openly or will even know that. But as a people of faith, as a community of faith, as God's people, that's where we are. We are a community who know what it is to give thanks to God because God is faithful. And God's faithfulness is expressed through God, God's guidance. And we can let go because God is faithful. God will guide. God will guide those who are leaving. It's not that they just go. They go because God is going with them. God is their guide. 
even in that strange place, in that new place. And so, friends, <coughs> anxiety is a common experience. Uh, as I've said earlier on, throughout our lives we, we have to let go. Um, we know what it is to let go of loved ones. Um, we know what it is to not always be in control uh, or always know what the outcome will be. And that, that is why we are anxious. Um, but we need to keep on reminding ourselves that we are a community who give thanks to God for God's faithfulness. And just as God continued to guide us who are staying behind, so God will guide those who are moving away. Let us pray. Grace is God. More and more, this is becoming a reality for our people. Loved ones moving away, children, grandchildren, going to distant lands. There are many reasons for this. But one thing we can know as a people of faith, we can continue to give you thanks for your faithfulness, for you are guiding our loved ones to those strange places. You will be their guide. They go with you. And we are thankful. Help us, Lord, when we feel anxious about our loved ones. Sometimes we have good reason to feel anxious. We know that. But we also have good reason to celebrate your faithfulness and to give you thanks. For as you are with us, so you are with our loved ones. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to ask our music team to lead us as we respond to the message.